privilege to be able to introduce you to our speaker, our guest speaker for today, for this morning. We are welcoming Marcus Singleton. Originally from the south side of Chicago, Inglewood, Marcus has now made Toronto home for the last four or five years. Marcus is an educator, an advocate for Black students and youth, and he is a critical thinking hip hop artist. He currently is a second year PhD student at the Ontario Institute for Studies in Education at the University of Toronto. And his work both on the ground in community and in research and scholarship is around critical hip hop pedagogy within black studies in the social justice area. His goal as a critical thinking hip hop artist is to be the artist that he doesn't see portrayed in mainstream platforms. The plan is to use, his plan is to use um, hip hop culture as a, liber, a liberate, liberatory tool to transform a community of listeners into activists and social change agents um, and community connectors who will live out the true mission and tenets of hip hop. The culture which is having a knowledge, which is the culture which is about having the knowledge of self, expressing love, peace, unity, and safety having fun through all the expressions that music can provide. So let's give Marcus our warmest creative mornings welcome in the chat with your emojis and by writing a ton of, of hyped messages for him. Let's bring Marcus to the stage and hear a little bit about his kismet journey and the work that he's doing around hip hop culture and community activism. Thank you, Marcus, welcome. That was an amazing introduction. Thank you so much. Um, it's just an uh, honor and pleasure to be here. Uh, can you guys hear me? We can hear you okay, and I've cool, got cool, you cool. pinned. We can see okay, you as well. Yeah, cool, cool. So yeah, it's just an honor. Thank, I just want to you know, shout out Carla and JCC for even inviting me into this space. So thank you so much for allowing me to share my story. Um, I'm not going to take up a whole lot of space and time. So let's just jump right in. I was go like uh, introduce myself, but I don't think that's necessary. <laughs> so, um, so kismet for me, hip hop has always been kismet for me um, when it comes to fate, destiny, divine appointments and connections with people, with spaces, with places. Um, so I just wanna share a, a little bit of how hip hop was my kismet, you know? I thought that was so dope for us to share that in the breakouts for everybody to share their kismet moments. So this is like my kismet moment. So like uh, Carla said, I'm originally from the South side of Chicago, um, the Inglewood community. I was raised in a single parent home. Right here is a picture of me and my mom. I was about like two or three years old in that picture. Um, and so uh, my mom was, you know, as my mother was raising me, uh, you know, without my father around, I was always looking for different voices and different, you know, uh, you know, messages that was that, that 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 my mom was telling me, but it was saying it to me in my own language. And I found that through hip hop. So as I got older, I just started like performing anywhere I could perform. And hip hop has always been like a vital piece to my life. Um, and so Chicago can be like kind of wild, like the situations that go down with, you know, with the shootings and the violence and things of that nature. But the one thing that kept me away from a lot of the activities that was going on in Chicago was hip hop. Um, and so this is a picture of my brother, uh, Fillmore Green, he's from Chicago. And this is a perfect representation of what being a youth is like being in Chicago. You stuck between like trying to gain, you know, uh, education, and then you stuck in between like gang culture and violence and you trying to walk this thin line, you know, of survival to get through from day to day. And so, and, and it's always, uh, uh, you, you're always searching for like knowledge or you searching for power. And unfortunately, a lot of the young people think that power is like by holding a gun. But again, hip hop, it kept me away from all of those things. Um, these were my teachers, along with my mother, these were the artists that became my teachers, Brand Nubians, especially KRS-One, Public Enemy, 
Jungle Brothers, X Clan, and Poor Righteous Teachers, just to name a few, they were te basically telling me the same things that my mother was telling me. And they was telling me, they was giving me the descriptive words to describe the type of environment that I was living in, but they was doing it from a conscious lens. So I always gravitated toward artists like these. And so it came a point in time where, and so I look at my life as like a book, right? So in each chapter of your life, you learn lessons, right? So I wanna share four lessons with you out of chapters of my life. Um, and one of the first lessons is hip hop is a, is a way of healing and building community. And the reason why I say that is because when I was coming up, I had a friend um, that lived on the south side of Chicago and we would all like play baseball and stuff together, but he went a different route. He went the route of unfortunately the streets way, but we kind of like stayed on the straight and narrow. And uh, it came a point in time when he lost his life because I guess he came up short on some money. The guys he was working for came and talked to him. They actually ringed the doorbell, spoke to his grandmother and walked him to the side of the house and they ended his life. And so for me, I was dealing with that emotion. I couldn't believe how somebody's life can just be taken away like that. And so I wasn't the type of dude to respond like in a violent way. So I kind of like internalized that. But what helped me to like process it was writing. And so I was able to write, uh, you know, writing is what like relieved um, that, that, that pain that I had in my heart for the loss of my friend. And it also was an act of healing. And it made me know, made me realize that this is what I wanted to do. Um, even though I didn't even get introduced to like actually becoming an MC or an artist until later on, but I knew that writing was gonna be a huge part of my life. And so hip hop became that healing, healing process and a way for me to build community. Um, and, you know, even in the process of me trying to figure out who I was, again, hip hop was there. It was my kismet to tell me what I wanted to do. I had no idea what, or, what I wanted to do in my life until I heard a song called Straight Out the Jungle by the Jungle Brothers. And I'm not gonna read the whole, you know, lyrics of the verse, of the first verse, but the first lines is educated man from the motherland. You see, they call me a star, but that's not what I am. So I was like, man, that's what I wanna be. I wanna be an educated, I wanna be an educated black man. I wanna be educated, I wanna be, I don't wanna be a star, you know what I'm saying? I know I'm a star in my own right, but I don't need anybody else validation to tell me that I'm a star. So I could be a star in my own right in the grassroots in my community. And so that's what guided my motions and my destinies and the connections that I was making. Hip hop was informed of that. And again, hip hop was my kismet. And so um, with that being said, a lot of people don't even know that the five, there are five elements of hip hop. You got graffiti, you got DJing, you know, break girls and break boys, but the commercial term is break dancing. And then you got MCing or rapping, right? But the one thing that's not really talked about is the fifth element of hip hop, which is the knowledge and the understanding of who you are, having the knowledge of self, right? And so that is what guided me all throughout my life. And so that led me to chapter two of my life, which is lessons two. Hip hop is not all about performance. It's about critically thinking and activism and community organizing, right? And so with that being said, back in the day, when you did, the, when you do the history, the founding, the found, one of the founding fathers of hip hop um, who started the Zulu Nation, which Zulu Nation was kind of like a non-for-profit organization, like hip hop's first non-for-profit organization that was about building community and was about activism, right? So this is like an example of one of their flyers, right? So the mission statement for hip hop is peace, love, unity, and having fun. And then it was all about knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. So before shows, they would have this thing called meeting of the minds before a party. And they would come and have these conversations about like, man, what's going on in the community? Well, we got gang violence. So how could we come up with a solution for gang violence? How do we come up with a solution for unemployment for the youth? How do we come up with like uh, housing issues and things of that nature? So they started coming together and started organizing. And that's what hip hop is about. Because the very definition of hip hop, hip means to know, to be aware, to be conscious, and hop means to spring up and to move into action. A lot of people use the term hip hop, but they don't really know what hip hop means. And that's the definition of hip hop. And so going back again to my main mentor, one of my main mentors, KRS-One, he has a song called Hip Hop Lives. 
And in that song, he says, hip means to know, it's a form of intelligence. To be hip is to be update and relevant. Hop is a form of movement. You can't just observe a hop, you gotta hop up and do it. Hip hop is more than music, it's more than performance. Hip hop is knowledge, hop is the movement. Hip and hop is intelligent movement. So it's all about having awareness and a consciousness of yourself. Again, going back to that fifth element of hip hop, which is knowledge of self and having the knowledge, uh, understanding and wisdom of who you are in order to navigate your life. And so that's why I'm in this PhD program um, to create moments of kismet for other youth um, so they can become more hip, more conscious, more aware. Um, and they want to hop and move and be motivated to organize and change things. Because I see young people as change agents. They're just not given the kismet. They're just not given the opportunities to reach that destination and that fate. You know what I'm saying? So that's what hip hop is all about. And that's what my work is all about. So that leads me to chapter three, which is lesson three, which is um, we should always seek to be in counter spaces or create them. And one of the another a amazing space for me growing up to keep me away from what was you know the type of activity that was going on on the, in, uh, in, on the south side of Chicago was black bookstores and this right here is a picture of a, a bookstore a uh, different book list which is in Toronto one of my favorite every time I go to a city that's the first question I was like where's the black bookstore <laughs> so I can go to a bookstore so a different book list is like one of my favorite places to be in Toronto and so this is a picture. And so it was a bookstore on the south side of Chicago that had like open mics and things of that nature. So we would go there for the open mic. Again, hip hop, we was going to do hip hop. We was going to rap or do whatever. But in the midst of that, we was gaining knowledge because the host of that bookstore uh, open mic was always referring to the things that we talked about in our raps or the things that was going on in the community to a book. And he would point to the shelves like, Y'all need to read the autobiography of Malcolm X, or you need to read Asada Shakur, you need to read this book, you need to read that book. And I was all in that counter space. Um, and George Day uh, of Oise, he always, Dr. George Day always talks about counter spaces and how important counter spaces is, because sometimes the school doesn't give our youth exactly what they need as, as far as like knowledge. So these bookstores and these spaces like that become those counter spaces for young people to go to. And that this was definitely my counter space. Um, and so again, following hip hop, doing it in these counter spaces is how I was able to meet Dr. David Stowall. Um, he's a professor of uh, University of Illinois, uh, University of Illinois at Chicago in the African uh, American Studies Department. And he had an open mic at UIC on a campus called Mojo's Pen. And again, chasing hip hop. I'm having a conversation with my guy. And he's like, yo, we about to go to this, this open mic at UIC. I'm like, open mic at a university? Man, let's go. Cause you know, in our mind, we thinking we want to go see if it's some girls, not only getting on a mic, we want to see if it's some young ladies there. So we, we get to the space and we see this guy who's the host. And I'm like, yo, who is, he was like super knowledgeable. I was like, who is this dude? Who is he? And come to find out he was a professor at UIC and he was from the South side of Chicago. And that was like my first connection of somebody who's from where I'm from, from my community that can speak the way I speak, but can also code switch and speak academically as well. So David Stovall is like, it tucked in my heart, like, man, maybe one day I could be a professor Cause it was like me seeing it. I was like, wow, I never saw, all we see is athletes. We see rappers, we see, that was like my first connection to actually seeing somebody who was a professor that's look like I look and talk, can talk how I talk. And so I took that dream in my heart. And then, so fast forward, I met my beautiful wife, who's a who's Canadian. Um, I met her again. Uh, my wife was my kismet. I met her on, uh, online. Uh, we, we conversated and uh, my first trip to Toronto was to come see my beautiful wife. And when I got off, of the, I took a Greyhound bus all the way from Chicago to Toronto. And when I saw her, I just knew that this was my wife. And that led me to going into OASE for my master's uh, in social justice education. And so my very first class, I run into Dr. Rosalind Hampton <laughs> and just having, being in her class and being exposed to her she created a counter space 
within uh, OISE um, for black students. And she started this black study cohort. And I was one of the students that she selected and just having conversations with her. And she is the one who encouraged me to go on to get my PhD. And I told her, I remember the conversation like it was yesterday. She was telling me like, you should, and I was like, you know where I'm from? I'm like, I'm from the South side of Chicago. We don't produce PhD. I only know one PhD from where I'm from. And that's Dr. David Stovall. And her response to me was like, that's all the more reason why you need to go and get this PhD. So that right there was a kismet moment for me, for me to be able to meet Dr. Rosa Hampton. And she's been an amazing mentor. I've learned so much from her, such amazing uh, experience. And if it had, again, if it hadn't been for hip hop and I wouldn't have been able to, um, to, to meet Dr. Rosa Hampton and do the work that I'm doing. Cause she asked me, what research would you want to do? And I said, I want to do something on hip hop. And she said, well, let's make it happen. And that's why I'm in this program today is because of, it's because of Dr. Rosa Hampton. So much respect to them too. And then, so it helps me to continue my work with young people, just like David Stovall sparked me and just like Dr. Hampton continue to challenge me and continue to spark me. I wanna do the same thing for young people um, that, I, that I connect and interact with. So right here is a picture of my brother Quan. Uh, Quan has got the hoodie on. Um, he started an organization in Detroit called Lyricist Society. And these are three of his students. He's actually a history teacher in Detroit, but he's also a hip hop artist as well. Um, and uh, this is brother Craig is from Toronto. And I was telling him that my friends and my family was coming up from Detroit. So we shot a music video. If we have time, we can play the video um, where we shot part of it in Detroit and we part, shot part of it in Toronto in the, Ken in the Kensington market area. And so this is the picture of that day. It was just hanging out um, in the midst of shooting that video. And we was just having a conversation. And it was just amazing to see like other people walking up to these young people, seeing them with their lyricist society. And they was inquiring at Kensington Market, like, what is that about? Like, what is lyricist society about? And they was able to explain. The adults didn't explain, but the young people was able to explain what this organization was about. So I'm in the process of trying to start a lyricist society in Toronto. Um, and me and Quan is talking about that, where we could have these social, like these cross-cultural exchanges across border with youth in Detroit and youth in Toronto. And so, yeah, this is, that's, so that's another kismet moment. And so the last, um, the last chapter and the last, you know, lesson four is learn how to speak to the community and the language of the community, right? Uh, you got some, one of my biggest issues with academia is that they speak in these high lofty type languages and it get lost in translation when it comes from the ivory, ivory tower to the grassroots, right? So I, I basically told Professor Hampton, I don't wanna do this research if I'm gonna become that. I wanna make sure that the language that I'm using is for the language of the people that's in the grassroots, right? And so I used to watch a crazy amount of television growing up. Like I could tell you what time it was based off of what television program was on at the time. That's how much television I watched, right? So this was usually my posture after school. Feet kicked up, got some snacks and a remote control in my hand, right? And so my mom used to always say, you need to read more, you need to read more. But it wasn't until I heard KRS-One, when KRS-One had a song called You Must Learn, and he was breaking down the inventions of African-Americans in America, all the inventions and what they, what they you know, added to American culture. And I never knew that. I was like, wow, how does he know all of this? And it comes from reading. And one of the biggest things that break my heart when I talk to young people, I ask them like, do you read? And when they tell me they don't really read, that breaks my heart. So, I, because I feel like reading is, very, is, is a, not only is reading uh, empowerment, but reading is a, is a form of resistance because the more you know, the more you can resist, uh, you know, the more you can resist ignorance and the more you can resist not being taught the correct way, right? Because I remember being armed with knowledge and my teacher celebrating Christopher Columbus and me being armed with the knowledge of going to counter spaces, black bookstores and listening to conscious hip hop, I was able to say Christopher Columbus wasn't a hero. He basically took land from the indigenous people, right? Which is what I learned through hip hop and learned in those counter spaces. So learning how to speak the language of the people is very important. And again, I learned that from hip hop. 
I, I believe that when we speak the language of the community, that's when we create kismet. That's when we create these opportunities where people can connect and people can like have these divine appointments and create change, right? So this is what my mission is with critical hip hop pedagogy within black studies. Again, is to preserve not only black studies and black history or African history, but also to preserve the true culture of what hip hop is supposed to be about um, and what it's meant to be intended. It's so many stereotypical things that associate, the things that are associated with rap and with hip hop. And like Busta Rhymes said, rap is business music, hip hop is cultural music. So it's all about being, having the knowledge and the understanding of yourself and love, peace, unity, and having fun. And anything that goes against that tenement is not hip hop, that's something else. It, it's my belief, right? And so that's why we wanna implement hip hop within education, because I believe that hip hop within education can transform the minds of young people, can create um, these counter spaces, can make hip hop not just performative. A lot of people create programs just to see kids rap and dance, and but it's not really, that's just one, that's just a few aspects of it. It's also a critical thinking aspect to hip hop as well. And I think that's been lost in translation. And so that's what my work is, is to show young people the critical side of hip hop, to think and use your mind, um, to be mental giants, you know what I'm saying? Um, and to like acquire all the knowledge that you can get and have a vision for yourself. Like I'm in the process of writing a book, which is a love letter to black students. And one of the things I tell them is to have a vision because without a vision, the people perish, right? So that's what Kismet to me is all about. Um, and so that's my talk for today. I didn't wanna take up a lot of time or a lot of space. This is my contact information, um, but I just wanna, I don't really like talking about myself and the things that I'm doing, but uh, I am a hip hop artist. Uh, I have CDs and I can give you guys some CDs to give to like anybody who came today. I got plenty of them. I'll just give them away. Um, and then I'm still putting out music. I have wax. I only did like, we only did 30 of these and which makes it like art, you know what I'm saying? Where once it's going, it's going and those that have it, they have it. And I think it just increases the value of the art. And I'm a part of, a, a, I have a podcast called the Boom Bap Chat. Um, and um, we have these three books that we put out um, and you can get them on Amazon and you guys have the links. And we're also currently working on a book called, uh, we're doing a book dedicated to the uh, native tongue because we feel again, like in academia, they only seem to talk about when I, based on the, off the limited research I've done, you only hear the same names in hip hop and rap, Jay-Z, you may hear a Nas and Kanye or Kendrick or J. Cole, but you never hear about the brand Nubians, the X-Clans, the KRS-Ones. And so that's what we created this book for, to introduce people to artists that you may not be exposed to, um, but, you know, that are not mainstream, but they're, they're independent artists and they're doing their thing. So that's my talk today. I hope it inspired you. I hope uh, it ignited you. And I hope that you become aware of your kismet moments. You know what I'm saying? Be aware. And when you are aware of those kismet moments, capitalize on them as much as you can. So thank y'all again for having me. Thank you for listening to me. Um, and I just really appreciate the space. Peace, y'all. Peace.